quick current day update before you get to the video that I filmed for you yesterday, which is fire, by the way. This shirt you can only get for two more days. You can see it's our logo, but it's made up of tiny little tools. It's pretty fly. It's our subscription shirt, and if you're signed up, you get a new shirt every month. It's the only way you can get our subscription shirts. We'll never release this shirt again. We'll never release last month's shirt again. It's a pretty cool deal, link in description, and we come out with awesome new designs every month. But if you want this one, you have two days. Drop it! <laughs> we need something with more, more pop and less fire. You see how it started sinking in? Oh yeah. It was about to come off. Nice! That was my first time I've ever done that. <laughs> <laughs> morning danger, Dave. Hey, dude. Ah, good morning, everyone! So, we uh, were running that tire a little low and then it came off and so I had never remounted a tire like that. So these things don't have tubes in them and so you need some kind of pressure to get it to hook, to seal to the rim. And so we just sprayed a bunch of stuff in there and lit it, and so we made an explosion inside the tire that pushed out the tire, sealed against the rim, and then we hooked up the air tank to fill it up the rest of the way. Super cool! Science, very neat. I have an idea for these go-karts that I just presented to Danger. I love it. And uh, what could go wrong, right? What could go wrong? So we've got, you know, we've got a few go-karts, right? And I thought, well, well, for one, they didn't do great on a, we have a pretty steep hill and we were trying to climb it, they didn't do great on it. And the guys at Go Power Sports told us, well, we got sprockets that'll gear them down. And I thought, that could work. But you know what else could work? Is if we took off the whole power plant and back axle on this. So everything that's not green, take off the whole black part here and weld it to the back of this, okay? Hear me out, I know, it sounds crazy. So basically this would be just a two engine, uh, it'd, be a, it'd be a four wheel drive, six wheel vehicle with two engines, two power plants stacked on top of each other. So the problem is it's not just like unbolting and bolting on, you gotta weld, do a little fab, and then you gotta figure out how to get your throttle cables to both be doing the same thing because you don't want one going like full speed and one going half speed. You have to get the gear shift to be, you know, able to shift both because these go in forward, neutral, and reverse, both of them. Uh, we got electrical, we got gas. We're not gonna do brakes. They, they have brakes on the rear axle. You can see these big old disc brakes. We're just not gonna have brakes on the back axle. So we'll just be using the brakes on the middle axle and the two front wheels. There's gonna be a million more headaches and problems as we get into it, I'm sure. But there's really only one way to do it. We just gotta do it. Ain't nothing to it but to do it. Ronnie Coleman. This is definitely gonna be a multi-day project, but it's all just rainy outside. We can't go do anything fun right now anyway, so we just thought let's go ahead and start this thing. Today my goal is just to get it all out and put right here, just set here, so I can start looking at it and figuring out how the heck we're gonna make this work. So today is the tear apart day. Break it before you even get it over there. 
I just want to see what it looks like. I've been dreaming about this. <laughs> it's going to look so stupid. All right, so... Yeah, that actually went really well. Now the hard part is figuring out how we're going to make it all work. We still have... This one has its own throttle and its own... I mean, everything. And I'd like to link them up. So the throttle, you only have to press one gas pedal to make both engines go. Make them go the same speed. This one has its own starter, its own battery, which will probably just keep two separate... Um, ignition systems just for simplicity in any case one takes longer to start I disconnected the brakes pulled the whole caliper off of that rotor so we'll have no brakes in the back one but we have brakes on both front and back in the actual go-kart this one has springs so you can see the back of this has those springs and shocks this one has that too and I thought it would be really cool if uh, we use that and hooked it up so that these two can kind of float independently so if there's a bump it'll go bump and then this one will bump over it and we'll have traction the whole time that might be tricky though so we may end up having to just hard weld them together so these will just be a big fixed unit but I really would like it if they would be independent and just kind of roll along the terrain I think that'd be really cool a lot of work to do but this is gonna be so awesome Good idea or bad idea? Good idea? I think it's gonna be fast. So we're gonna run into a ton of problems, I'm sure, and try to have to figure out how to fix them. The only way to know is to start it. So need to hook this frame to that frame. There's a little hinge joint here. We got a shock and a spring here. There's another joint here. So this thing is hooked on with three spots, there, there, and there. And so we need to kind of replicate back here, but there's not anything to hook to. So we're, there's gonna be some fab which I'm not great at. We worked enough on this today though. Now I have to go do some actual work. We uh, have been gone from the bunker for several days for the holidays. Merry Christmas, by the way. So we gotta head up there, a bunch of stuff to take care of. Candy paint with a white on top. Okay, you wanna hear how dumb I am? You can tell I changed clothes, I did my hair. It's because I was, I went and asked Mary, I was like, hey, you wanna go eat lunch? And then we'll go to the bunker? She was like, yeah, sounds good. And then I went and I was talking to David and he said something about the vet clinic. I was like, oh, I've got a vet clinic meeting today. So I am actually going to a vet clinic meeting, not to the bunker right now. I gotta go to a vet clinic meeting and then to a bunker. I'm gonna, I have too many businesses. I need to, I need to downgrade. Mm, I actually want like seven more. I have a lot of business ideas and, and I really enjoy it. It's really fun for me to like grow these things. And so like, I have like seven more business ideas that I need to get working on. It's gonna be a little tricky, find time, but all the other ones are still running well, so why not keep adding more, right? <laughs> it's a flawless plan. The weather's great though. Look at this great weather out here. It's a beautiful day in Texas. If it was actually cold, it would be snowing like crazy the day after Christmas. But it's, yeah, it's not cold. It's 56 degrees. Real cool. I don't know if you can tell that it's like dark. It's not dark dark, but it's getting dark because yeah, it's about five hours later than the last time I talked to you. Uh, the meeting for the clinic went good, and then we went to a meeting at the bunker that lasted, yeah, for about three hours. So we got a lot done though, but like nothing I can tell you right now because a lot of stuff's up in the air. It's gonna be cool. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you literally everything eventually because I love I love being able to hear your ideas and you guys help me out a lot. Oh, look at a little deer! Look at a little dairy deer! But for now, I can't say it because nothing is like finalized and it's just a lot of big things. 2019 is going to be a crazy year for the bunker if everything goes according to plan, which it will because I'm a great planner. I'm not, I'm not actually a very good planner at all. I'm just really enthusiastic about stuff. And so I just keep pushing, pushing, pushing with no plan. And eventually something works out and it's usually okay. That's my resume. Good news and bad news. Uh, just found out. So you guys know that I was training for a run a while back. I was like really going and running a lot. And it's because I tried to do a trail run, an off-road race run, not like a truck race, but like a running race. And it was 25 miles and I couldn't do it. My legs gave out at 14 miles. And that's because, well, I had never, I didn't train enough, obviously. And I had only trained on flat ground and I had only run 11 miles total. My, that was my all-time max that I run at one time. And so trying to get to 25, and then also it's off-road now and not on roads, and like there's a lot of climbing involved. Like, my legs just gave out. 
And so I did it with my friends. They wanted me to do it, so I was like, fine. I'm not a big runner. I really don't like running, but I like challenges and I like pushing myself. And like, they asked me to do it. And I was like, yeah, I can run 25 miles. I can do anything. And I couldn't. So now, like, like a week after that race, they're like, hey, there's another one. It's uh, coming up in January and it's a 50K. And I was like, 50K. And I did the math and I was like, that's 31.068 miles. Just kidding, I just typed that in my computer to figure out what it is. 31 mile race now that they're wanting to do, so it's, it's longer. But I had a couple months to train, and so I started training. And now I've run 20 miles at one time. That's my max that I've run at one time. So still not 31, and that was on roads, that was not trails. But I think I can do it, 31 miles. I only need to run 11 extra miles over what I've done, but it also is off road, which is gonna be really hard. But I think if I pace myself, I'll be able to do it. I was trying to keep up with my buddies the first time, and so I just wore myself out. And 14 miles in, my legs were just cramping and I couldn't go anymore. But I think if I pace myself, I'll be able to do it. What I'm getting at is good news and bad news. The good news is I just got an email saying that I'm not on the wait list anymore. A few weeks ago, I found out that I had waited too long to register and I was put on a wait list and I didn't think I was gonna be able to do it, even though I'd been training. I just got an email saying that my wait list, I made it to the front and now I am a registered runner for this race. The bad news is, now I have to run 31 miles off-road in like 10 days. And I also kind of didn't train for the last two weeks when I thought, oh, I'm just on the wait list, like I'm probably not gonna make it. So I kind of just stopped. <laughs> Should have been continuing that, apparently. Um, yeah, but now I got 10 days to really train, so I'm gonna probably run like 10 miles a day up until the, I'm just kidding. I'm probably gonna run like three miles a couple times just to keep my legs loose. I'm pumped though, I'm, I'm nervous because like I failed in front of you guys the first time and I don't really want to fail again. Fail once, you know, shame on the race. Fail twice, shame on me for not actually training enough to do these dumb races. I'm putting it all on the line. I'm gonna film it, whether I make it or fail and I've actually worked really hard this time. Like I've, I don't like running, I don't know if I've said that before. And I work super hard. I've been trying so hard to get better at running. And I used to only be able to run like three to five miles before I was like dead. And I ran 20 miles the other day and it felt good. I didn't want to run anymore. But like I was walking the next day. I was walking later that night. Like my legs were all right. They, they were a little stiff, but not bad. And that I couldn't have done that two months ago. I couldn't have run 20 miles and then walked around afterwards. I would have been dead which is probably how I'll be after 31 miles off-road. So, coming up in about 10 days, you will see me running 31.0686 miles, hopefully. And I'm excited. Like, these kind of races, you have to like, bring a backpack full of stuff because you can't just, well, I can't. I don't think, normal people can't just go 31 miles without like some assistance. So like, there's a fair amount of like hiking and jogging and a lot of thought, like preparation, like knowing when to eat something and when to drink something and not to drink too much or eat too much or eat, drink too much of water and not enough Gatorade or vice versa. And I actually don't know any of that stuff. So I'm, I'm gonna go off of what my friends tell me to do. It's nerve wracking. Also, I wanted to say uh, a lot of you guys have started talking about Joe Robinette. He is a fellow YouTuber who I've been talking to for few weeks now, um, his dog, unfortunately, we found out he has cancer. And so Joe mentioned that on his channel and everyone said, reach out to Dr. Matt, because he knows about that. And so Joe got in contact with me and we started talking and he seems like a really, really cool guy, he makes really cool videos. And uh, then we were like, hey, um, wanna make videos together? And so I think uh, Joe just mentioned on a video that I watched today, which you guys, it was yesterday for you guys, uh, that he was gonna come down here and we're gonna make videos. And we are, we've been talking about that. He does like, bushcraft wilderness survival stuff and like goes out in the snowy woods for like days on end to do like survival type videos which sounds super cool i know nothing about that kind of stuff but i would love to learn so go tell joe the demolition is here thanks for watching off the ranch i love you i'll see you next time Hey, what camera is that number? Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell Mayor. <laughs>